What's going on guys, it is Tom and welcome back to a brand new video and a brand new episode of my F1 2017 career mode and we are here for round 5 for the Spanish Grand Prix in the beginning of the European season and uh, contrary to what most teams will probably be doing for this racetrack, we're not bringing any upgrades for this race and uh, like I said, we're trying to plan out a big upgrade for Baku which is going to be uh, the plan for now on because that is a track that I'm not looking forward to but um and massive thank you guys for the support in the series so far. And uh, I know I've had a lot of comments of you guys asking me uh, why don't I reduce it from 110% downwards to like maybe 207, 108. And the, th the thing is, um, everyone was telling me in, e in every single video to put it up to 110. And now I'm finally on 110. People wanting to turn it back down again. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick with uh, what you guys originally wanted me to do. And uh, eventually with the upgrades, you know, and a bit of pace, it, it should all come uh, full circle. I mean, we I know we've had a few poor performances this year, but I mean, we still had a good race in Australia. We had a good race in China, even though it looked a bit. That one looked a little bit um, sketchy. And also, we got points in Sochi, so we've done okay so far. Only Bahrain was the only major uh, issue with the AI. That was the issue. The AI were OP around Bahrain. Um, it's not that the AI on 110 was too hard. It's just that they're na naturally OP. But as you can see, a lovely little shot here of my uh, current helmet for this season, which I absolutely love. And a lot of you guys are loving the comments down below. But um, we're here for Spain and uh, track that. Um, in past games, I've not really enjoyed and also I've not really looked forward to because uh, I've always not had great pace around here. However, I was very impressed with the car performance this weekend, um, especially in Friday practice. The car was working absolutely beautifully. Um, I was using the engine components that we used in the first four races, so they were struggling. And I can tell you that we are going to take 65th place worth of grid penalties this race because... Um, the gearbox is on 58% and I've still got to do this race and Monaco with that gearbox and I don't think that's a risk I'm willing to take because I'm obviously going to lose gears at various times and multiple times which is something I don't want because that's going to cost me hand over fist so I'd much rather just take a penalty start from the back and that is me done then for at least a few more races and I can just then focus on the race itself and also open up my strategy so practice is what we're going to be doing here today no qualifying but um as you can see there, we're kind of just going through the practice program, so so far it's going pretty well. We struggled slightly on the tire wear test, and then uh, we really struggled here on the uh, qualifying performance test, we'll see in a moment. Um, I tried my best, I went out for two attempts, the second one, I didn't even finish the lap on the second attempt, because I was even slower than the one you're seeing on screen right now, but uh, half a second off, absolutely nowhere near the target, and uh, that is just merely down to the worn engine components that I was using, it wasn't allowing me to... Um, get anywhere near and I was losing a lot of time on the straights but uh, as you can see now we're going to the final part of the practice session and it's going to be the um, tar the, the race strategy sorry and uh, this one no problems whatsoever we are going to smash the target of hitting the purple score and um and it's going to be a successful end to the practice session and now we are starting to save up on resource points which is very good i am planning to do a gearbox durability upgrade because that, that gearbox is becoming an issue now for grid penalties but uh, other than that we're now going to have a little chat with emma and uh, she comes over to us and she has something to, to announce and uh, that announcement is that we have a brand new rival we have lost our last couple of rivalries to uh, red bull drivers like recently we had Verst verstappen then we had ricardo then we had verstappen again and now We've got Lance Stroll, so this is a much more uh, rival that's on my level, and one that um, I think I can I can beat. You know, uh, obviously in qualifying, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to qualify, so he's really going to get a head start me in terms of point in terms of points, but. Um, I think I can beat Stroll in the rivalry, but as you can see on screen right now, we are switching out the components because uh, they are starting to struggle. I mean, the RC was on uh, on onto the orange, on the dark orange, and also as you can see here, we're going to switch over the gearbox. And uh, yeah, take the penalties, and that is going to be the end of uh, practice. Obviously, no qualifying, so um, it should make for a very interesting race. And hopefully, I can have a good race here today. If I can score points, that'd be fantastic. But uh, we'll have to wait and see how it all pans out. Other than that, that is practice, and we're now going to jump into Sunday for the race for round five of the season for the Spanish. Grand Prix. Right, so on the grid for Spain, round five of the season, P20 on the grid, last the first challenge or last the question mark should I say and a uh, very interesting one here today obviously um, you would have seen in practice I switched over the uh, engine components because every single one was on the yellow including the ICE which is actually on the uh, orange and uh, my gearbox was on 58% and I didn't really want to take the risk of using that gearbox for the rest of the weekend because I could have easily lost the gear in qualifying that could have ruined my qualifying lap and also I could have maybe used that gearbox now in the race and also ruined the possibility of having a good race so I'd much rather just take the penalty start from the back open up my strategy option and um 
that way at least I won't have any gearbox issues this race and also full power from the engine available but um, I've realized this season after a couple of races now 110% AI is not a major challenge I can perfectly keep up my issue is that the car will definitely not be one of the top three cars by the end of the season uh, the focus this year is going to be to try and beat Williams and like I said before I'm going to try and bring a big upgrade to Baku so that's going to be the plan from now on out so any resource points that I get I will save for a big upgrade before the Baku race but um in terms of the strategy on, sc on screen right now, you can see that we're going to start on the hard compound tyres and switch to the mediums. Now, um, I was thinking about the strategy below, but I feel like that's the sort of strategy that all the AI cars are going to go for. So, um, I'm sort of leaning towards just going a little bit more for the one stop. Hope that my pace is good on the hard tyres and then hopefully pushing their mediums at the end. But uh, last season we scored points in this race and I'm hoping to do the same here today. I've run the field the car slightly so hopefully that will help us out. Obviously with a fresh engine we shouldn't need to run rich mix that much. So um, also for I can save fuel if necessary. So hopefully we can have a good race here today and hopefully it all goes well for us. But uh, nevertheless P20 on the grid. Let's try and have a little bit of a fun race here today for Spain and see how many positions we can recover. And uh, let's see if we can try and finish in the points. Right, here we go then. Last place at Spain. Five red lights and it's going to be lights out and away we go. And it's a pretty good start for me actually. Very good reaction times and we're right on the back of Verline here. It's actually, I'm very impressed with that start and the hard tyres to be fair. And uh, here we go then. Van Dorn's off to a shock and the McLaren's holding everybody up. We're going to spot the inside line up the inside of a couple of cars here. Also up the inside of Jolien Palmer around the outside now through turn two. A little bit of contact I think behind yellow flag conditions. And we're now green here at Spain. Get my foot down. We've got a VSC early on here in Spain. So, uh, very interesting start. We're going to use this to save the fuel and also put the car in Lee mix to just save the engine performance. But, uh, very good start here so far up into 15th place. Okay, VSC ending. Let's wait for the restart here. The Delta's pretty damn positive. So, we're not going to have any issues of getting a possible penalty. But now let's see what our pace is like on these hard compound tyres and see if we can keep up with these guys. Okay, so so far not too bad. Personal rest lap times. I'm keeping pace on these hard tyres and I'm keeping up with Kvyat just about. And um, I'm just it's just crucial that I stay within DRS so that way I'll always be in the mix here. But my pace is pretty good on these and uh, to say that everyone ahead of me is not too compound softer, my pace isn't too bad here and Palmer's not really made a challenge yet to overtake me. So right now things are looking pretty good. Another personal best, six tenths faster than last lap, and I'm actually pretty close to Kvyat here. I'm not going to be close enough to make a move, but um, I've definitely found a better time that lap, so uh, we could be on for an overtake very soon. I do want to start getting past these trainer cars, because we are losing a bit of time to uh, the point scorers, and that's not ideal, so uh, we need to start making some moves soon. Right, first car in the pit lane, and there's Felipe Massa, as I set another personal best, so pace is still good. I'm right behind Kvyat, I just can't get close enough. I can't get the traction on these tyres to uh, really make a challenge on the Russian, but uh, I feel like the move will come soon, especially because his soft tyres should be wearing out soon. So the move will come eventually, the question is when. Okay, so Magnussen's coming to the pit lane, also a few other cars. This time I'm a lot co closer to Daniel Kvyat, and this time he doesn't have Magnussen slipstream to help him out. So here we go then, we're going to try and make the move on the Russian. Here we've got a huge slipstream, even though Kvyat has DRS, and here we go up the inside of turn one and we're going to make the move on the Torosso driver yes we do and there we go we made the move and now we can try and chase after my teammate who uh, I'm going to expect he's going to pit the end of this lap anyway but I want to try and see what pace is like on these tyres now in some clean air right another personal best we've got a load of cars in the pit lane once again and also we're going to rejoin just ahead of Valtteri Bottas who's in another set of, super, of soft compound tyres so Archon's also stayed out for one more lap which is very interesting but uh we're up on the P4 now on these hard compound tyres and technically this is for a position because I'm only doing one stop this race and Bottas I'm going to expect is only doing one more stop so technically speaking we are in a net P4 which is probably P3 because Ocon's yet to do his stop, first stop of the race so um, who knows maybe the strategy may work out better than I expected. The pace is good on these tyres and the car's been working very nicely so far this weekend and especially on Sunday so I'm very impressed so far so who knows maybe we could get something out of this race quite special if we get the car to the end and also have some solid pace throughout because uh, there's a few cars coming up behind Bottas who may or may not have stopped here but either way behind them there's no one really near so we might still have a bit of a cushion here. Okay so Ocon pits and so do the remaining cars up front so I'm going to momentarily, I mean literally momentarily take the lead for about two seconds until Bottas now overtakes me for the lead of the race and uh, we've got Raikkonen for company not too far behind so uh, 
We're going to be letting these faster cars through at a very quick pace here, but um, Raikkonen the Ferrari obviously doesn't want to let Bottas get away after uh, he's, had, he's had such a good start to the season once again here, Kimi. So the defending champion is going to be hungry to try and pass his fellow countrymen, but uh, for now we're going to keep him behind us at least until maybe the back straight. Right, Bottas, purple up as you'd expect. Meanwhile, I'm about four seconds a lap slower, but here comes Kimi Raikkonen now. He's going to obviously understandably pass me with DRS assistance, but uh, still, we're now in a net P3 technically, so um, this is good. This is very good. I'm very impressed so far, and uh, I, might, I was actually expecting to not be this far ahead after the first pit stops occurred, so obviously we had some good pace even though we was down in P15, and the AI aren't as fast as other circuits, so... Um, yeah, we're right now with a net P3. Like I said, Vettel's on soft, so uh, he could be doing another two stop this race. So you never know. We could be on for a very good result here. As long as I keep my tyres in check, which um, I am doing so far. My front lift is uh, starting to you know, scream to me a little bit. But uh, other than that, the engine obviously is holding up pretty nice here. As it is brand new, and I'm now literally about to go bang on 0, zero on target for fuel. So things are looking very good at the moment, and our pace is very solid. Okay, now here comes uh, Seb. He's going to make the same moves that Wackenden did last lap. However, you can notice our straight line speed is actually pretty good around here. Obviously, due to the new engine components. And also, I am running lower aero than what I normally do. So the straight line speed is actually pretty good. Because I know I've had a lot of guys in the comments saying, upgrade the engine. Honestly, I don't need to. The car is absolutely fine on a straight line if I wanted to run lower wings. But the car running lower wings, that's the issue here. I can't run low wings because the aero and the chassis is terrible and that's what needs upgrading so uh, don't worry the car's fine in straight line I just need to try and improve the aero and that way I can run lower wings and still have the downforce required to push hard around these circuits so right now I'm still doing a pretty good job Hamilton's up next who's going to be the next man to catch me Lewis Hamilton was behind me however he's been passed by Verstappen and it does lead me to believe that Lewis may have an issue with his car. He's actually holding up a few cars behind. Verstappen, though, has managed to break free. And uh, he's now chasing me down at a rate of knots. However, I did pretty much just match my personal best last time around. And now Ricardo, based off of the radio, has got a car issue. So a few cars around me having issues here. And uh, that's pretty good to hear because obviously it's given me the opportunity to, you know, maybe... Um, just hold my position for that little bit longer. But right now, Verstappen is catching me. But I'm still in P4. This is a net P4, so... Very good so far. I'm very impressed and uh, the car is holding together nicely and so are the tyres. My lap times are very consistent. Like I said last time, pretty much matching my personal best. Well then, personal best, 23-4. Still got some really good pace on these tyres. Verstappen is within DRS but he's not close enough to make the move this lap so we're holding on. Okay, so Vettel's into the pit lane. There's going to another set of hard tyres, or should I say onto a set of hard tyres. Meanwhile, here comes Verstappen. Another personal best for me, though. Very impressive pace, I've got to say. But here comes Max, making the move. I'm not going to waste too much time behind him. I'm going to try and let him do his thing, avoid not getting my front wing taken off, and uh, continue with our rhythm, because I really don't want to get disrupted now with my pace, because it's very good. And I'm going to say it now, we could get a top five this race if we nail it. I really think we can. Okay, here we go then, through the final chicane, Verstappen stays out, I'm going to come in. Now, do I dare attempt the overcut, or should I say the undercut, on Verstappen here? That would be very ballsy if I were to, but uh, you know what? I do like how the car's been driving this race. I do like how consistent the setup is, so why not give it a go? So here we go then, on to mediums. Now, Verstappen's going to go on hard, I'm going to expect him to anyway. Um, he may go into another set of mediums, possibly, but a 2.3 stop, absolutely fantastic there from the boys. And now we're just going to get underway now, so let's try and get up to speed. We are going to redraw a little bit of traffic here. Can we come out ahead of Massa? It's going to be very tight. Massa's there on my inside. I'm going to go very deep on the brakes. Squeeze Massa out, and there we go. Critical that we came out ahead of Massa, especially because he's on soft compound tyres. Okay, so we've got a few cars in the pit lane. Meanwhile, I've got DRS on Danny Kvyat. Personal best up of the race with a 122.7. Here comes Felipe Massa, though, on the soft compound tyres, making the move up the inside. I think I can match him on the brakes here. Can I go around the outside? Yes, I can. And there we go. We're going to hold on to our position nicely here, but I need to get the move on Kvyat because the dirty air is holding me up. And I uh, can then hopefully use these tyres as some clean air. So let's try and get on the back of Kvyat now next time this lap. Okay, Kvyat comes in, he's off them medium tyres, and now uh, he's going to release me basically with DRS. Massa's going to be close to me once again, but he's not as close as last lap, so I'm going to try and defend here. Here comes Felipe, though, he's pretty quick in that straight line with that Williams, but I'm just going to go defensive slightly. He's still committing to the move, I'm going to have to go around the outside again here at turn one, and I uh, can defend that position quite nicely, but I'm now up to P6. 
Right, Science is in the pit lane. Massa's looking pretty racing them soft tyres. He's got DRS on me here. But the uh, thing is, Massa's going to have to stop again because he's on soft tyres, like I said. So, I'm not too worried if he does overtake me. However, I prefer not to just so I don't lose any time. Right now, he hasn't managed to get past me there because I've managed to get enough of a gap out to him. But let's see if I can try and stretch my lead over him on these mediums and try and uh, build, build a bit of pace. Okay, Massa's coming to the pit lane. So, we're now going to be roaming solo by ourselves. And the question is, will Ricardo or Hamilton's cars improve in terms of how um, of the issues they were having, and will they start to catch me? So uh, right now, Hulkenberg's in P6 behind, so he's the nearest car. So right now, it's looking like those two guys I just mentioned are not recovering through the field. So we could be finishing here, guys, if we bring this car home and set some good lap times. Okay, so I just did a lap in Rich Mix, and uh, it's going to be my personal best at 22.2. However, we do have small calls for concern because. Uh, Hulkenberg is faster than me, so um, that's my best up that I can do and Hulkenberg's faster, I'm now back down to standard, so Hulkenberg, if he's at this pace, he could catch us by the end of the race. Right, I'm still doing good lap time, it's 22 sevens, I'm basically matching the best ups I did in standard mix, but um, Hulkenberg is very quick and uh, he's now 1.7 behind, so we might be having a battle in these closing stages of the Grand Prix here. Okay, so I think Hulkenberg is close enough and is, in, is within DRS, so we're going to go to the last half of the race now, but here comes Nico Hulkenberg, I'm going to go up to Rich Mix, I've got a little bit in reserve to try and defend from Nico, and I think we've got enough here. As we go into the first corner, I'm going to save that last bit for the back straight, but I think other than that, we should be okay to defend here, because I've still got enough tyres to sort of keep the traction and uh, not have any dodgy exits. The front left is a little bit worn, but uh, other than that, the tyres are holding up pretty nicely, so we should be okay to defend from him. Okay, into the final sort of chicane section for the for last time in this race. And it's been an incredible performance from last on the grid to P5 with an incredible strategy. And then we're just going to be able to stay ahead of Hulkenberg and come home for a very solid 10 points, I believe. And what a race that was. And my best result of the season by a mile. And uh, just overall, what a performance and what a race to do it. And I'm very happy with that. That is a very good result for me. And uh, well deserved 10 points. And ones that are definitely very welcome. And ones that are definitely needed in the championship. And they uh, managed to beat our teammate rather comprehensively this weekend. And uh, the whole race went absolutely fantastic. I was I, I, The car felt good in practice. But um, I, it normally feels okay in practice in most tracks. But uh, in the race, it felt absolutely incredible. There were a few setup tweaks and uh, kept the car fairly balanced on the setup. And uh, it seemed to really work, especially for the hard tyre. The hard tyre stint was absolutely brilliant. And uh, the car performed brilliantly. And uh, that is just um, perfect for us as we get uh, a fifth place. It's for 4-1-2. Meanwhile, with Rakan winning for the Scuderia and uh, Bottas in third. And Hamilton and Ricardo's race having major problems with Verstappen bringing it home in P4. But... Um, that was the podium for round five of the season. And up next, we go to Monaco. But first of all, let's look at the race results, drivers and constructors standings to see how things shape up after that very good race and a very interesting race, at least for me anyway. Right, so as we can see, looking at the final race results, Raikkonen wins for Ferrari with Vettel in second, Bottas in P3 and Verstappen in fourth. And then I come home in a brilliant P5. Nico Hulkenberg also in a very good sixth place with uh, Carlos Sainz, the home hero, in also a very impressive P7. Daniel Ricciardo there down in P9 with my teammate Esteban Akon missing out on points. And then scrolling down, as you can see, Hamilton, 16th place, one lap adrift. So... He must have had some huge issues this race because his best lap was, uh, I mean, it was back marker pace. So uh, Hamilton having some big issues here today. But um, for the driver standings, as you can see on the screen right now, we jump up to P8 there, getting past Hulkenberg and my teammate in the first good solid result of the season and massive points haul. And uh, as you can see in the constructors, however, we now jump Williams. So we retake fourth place. So that's a very good result for me today and some very solid points for the team to take home back to the factory and hopefully try and continue building momentum. But uh, other than that, guys, that has been this episode of Cream. And if you have enjoyed it, please do smash the like button. Let's try and smash 300 likes on this. Also, if you're new around here, subscribe to my channel for future F1 content, daily F1 content, if I'll try my best to maintain that now as I'm back at school. But uh, also check out these videos on screen if you haven't done so already. And uh, yeah, guys, that's about it for this video. And I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one very soon. Goodbye.